Salutations, mini mathematicians! Welcome to your review, getting into module six, which is some of our geometry and fun triangle unit. So let's write down our lesson purpose, 6.0C review, triangles and other shapes. If you ever need to pause the video, please do so. You're in charge of your learning today. We're going to need review vocabulary and angle relationships and shapes. We're going to use a protractor, some scissors, and some tape today for some fun activities. Remember, compliments are always right. This is part I love your hair today. It looks great. Compliments are always right. Two angles that add it to be 90 degrees are complementary. Okay, so you have this handy dandy handout right here. And the first part is we are going to be reviewing some vocabulary from 6.0a. So we're going to be using this shape and we're going to find and name the following in the figure above. We're not going to name all of them. We're just going to share a few of them. So taking a look, if I wanted to see a scalene obtuse triangle, remember scalene means all three sides are different. Obtuse, one angle is greater than 90 degrees. So if I take a look here, I notice that triangle LBC is scalene and obtuse. Another one you could possibly be like, oh, that's definitely scalene and obtuse. If, if we took a look at something like um, CLK, if we looked at this triangle, this is our obtuse angle and those three side lengths are definitely all different. So again, maybe you saw a different one and that's perfectly fine to include as well. Next one's isosceles obtuse. Isosceles means at least two sides are the same. Obtuse means one angle is over 90 degrees. So if I take a look at this, maybe I look at ah, MNO, triangle MNO. Definitely these two angle, sorry, two sides are congruent, making the opposite side angles congruent also. Another one maybe that stood out to you was triangle um, MSO. Notice these are reflections of each other. If we look for a rectangle that is not a square, rectangle that is not a square, notice this square definitely pops out to me. Um, maybe we can look at this entire outline of the whole shape. So I'd look at quadrilateral A, E, G, J. It's a rectangle that is not a square. And a rhombus that is not a square or a rectangle. So a rhombus is a quadrilateral four-sided shape where all the sides are the same length. So what makes a rhombus different than a square is a square has to have 90 degree angles. So a rhombus, a square, and a rectangle, they're all parallelograms, meaning opposite side lengths are going to be parallel. But a square and a rectangle have to have those 90 degree angles, right? And a rhombus, the angles can be whatever it ends up being. So taking a look, I need a rhombus that is not a square or a rectangle. I'm going to look at rhombus, and again, we just use quadrilateral here. This definitely looks like a square. Well, MNOS, notice the side lengths are the same. They're congruent, but we are not meeting at 90 degree angles. So I'll use MNOS. Perfect, why don't you pause the video and finish two, four, six, eight, and we'll go over it in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look how you did. So an isosceles right triangle, an isosceles right triangle, isosceles at least two sides are the same, right? There is a 90 degree angle and it's a triangle. So here are some possible triangles that you could have looked at. A parallelogram, these are some possible quadrilaterals. A parallelogram could be a square, it can be a rectangle. Um, a trapezoid, a trapezoid has, is a quadrilateral, also has one set of parallel sides and then one set that is not a parallel side. So these are a few trapezoids. I should have probably just used the uh, quadrilateral to name them, but I wrote out trapezoid because they're super special. Remember, a trapezoid is how you trap a tiger. You might be like, what, Mrs. Barr? So if you had a tiger on the loose and you dug a pit and you put leaves over it 
and then your tiger. Here's your tiger. Here's some stripes on your tiger. It has a big sharp mouth. Your tiger's gonna walk across the pit through the leaves, fall in, and then the tiger can't get out. It's trapped in the trapezoid. It's how you trap a tiger. And then all the mini mathematicians are safe from the tiger. <laughs> Okay, and the last one, quadrilateral, that's not a square, not a rectangle, or not a trapezoid. So just trying to make some funny looking quadrilaterals here. There are a few that you could have found. Okay, let's take a look at the next direction. It says read each word question carefully. Determine if each statement is true or false. If false, connect, correct a word or phrase to make it a true statement. So when I'm looking at this, what I need to be thinking about is my vocabulary and how I can make it true if it's false. So a line is a flat surface that extends without limit in all directions. So a line isn't really a flat surface. It's just going in two directions. So it's not in all directions. So this is false. And the word we need to change is line, and we're going to replace it with plain. So think about like the XY plane and extends in all directions and it's a flat surface. So congruent triangles are triangles that have the same size and shape. That is true, so we don't have to fix anything else. Finish 11, 12, 13, 14, pause the video and we're gonna go over them as soon as you are ready. Okay, so taking a look. Number 11 was false because the sum of angles in any triangle is always 180 degrees. And we're going to be looking at cool activity today. Look at that. An acute angle measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So that was false. It's not between 90 and 180. It's so acute, so tiny and acute. Um, supplementary angles add to 180 degrees. This is true. You might take a look at that S in supplementary, and if you put a, a line across it, it turns into an 8, so that's one way you can remember. And right triangles can have more than one angle. That's false. They cannot, because if you had two angles that were 90 degrees, you're already at 180 degrees, and you can't have an angle that's 0 degrees or negative degrees. So we cannot have three angles in our triangle anymore if we had more than one 90 degree angle. Great job, mini mathematicians. Let's keep going. If we turn the page, we want to know the answer that best describes the definition. So again, connecting to your 6.0a vocab that you worked on. Points that lie on the same line are called, it's not a midpoint, it's not a line segment. These are called collinear. So they're collinear, they lie on the same line, linear, thinking about line. Um, the next one says a part of a line that extends infinitely in only one direction. That's going to be a ray. A collection of points that extend in two directions without an end is called a line. Perfect. So we're just going to do a little review of classifying triangles by side and angle. Remember by sides we could have equilateral, meaning all the sides are the same. We could have isosceles, isoscales, how I kind of remember to spell it. At least two sides are the same. So by definition, equilateral is an isosceles, but an isosceles is not an equilateral. Uh, scalene, meaning all of them are different. By angles, if we have a right angle in your triangle, it's a right triangle. If they're all less than 90 degrees, it's acute. And if one of them is greater than 90 degrees, it's obtuse. So let's take a look at 18. These marks mean that they are congruent. If all three sides are congruent, that means the angles are also congruent. So this is an equilateral acute. Equilateral acute triangle. And something I want you to think about is the bigger the angle opens, the longer the opposite side length is going to be. The smaller the angle is, the shorter the opposite side length is going to be. So I'll show you that one more time. If you take your hands and you make a 90 degree angle and you make that angle even larger to be obtuse, notice if you had a line connecting your fingers, it'd be even bigger than when it was a 90 degree angle. But if you go back to that 90 degree angle, a right angle, 
and then you make that angle smaller. If you had a line connecting your fingers here, that would become even shorter because you made the angle smaller. Important for the whole module. Okay, why don't you finish 19, 20, 21, pause the video, and we'll go over it as soon as you're ready. Ready? Excellent. This is an isosceles obtuse. This angle is obviously greater than 90, and these two side lengths are congruent. This is a scalene right. We have one right angle. That's what that box means, and it's scalene because all three side lengths are different. This is an isosceles acute. Two side lengths are the same. At least two are the same, and we have all our angles less than 90 degrees. Excellent work. Let's keep on cooking. So I want you to read the question carefully and state whether the statement is true or false. And if it's false, we're going to explain our reasoning. So we'll do the first two together and you'll do the rest of them on your own. An equilateral triangle is always isosceles. If we think about this, it's a true statement. This is true. By definition, isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. Please write it down. And if you don't want to write out the whole word congruent, remember the symbol for congruent. And an equilateral triangle has three congruent sides. And three is, this, is meeting the criteria of at least two. At least two means two or more. Perfect. An isosceles triangle always has two congruent angles. Hmm, this is false. Based on our reasoning above, it could have three congruent angles. So here's our explanation why. If we have two congruent sides, you have two congruent angles. If you have three congruent sides, you have three congruent angles. Okay, so why don't you finish 24, 25, 26, and we'll go over them as soon as you're ready. Okay, 24, did we get, that's right, false. So 24 is false. Scalene means no equal sides, hence you cannot have any congruent angles. 25, the sum of the sides of a triangle is 180. The sum of the sides no, the sides can add up to anything as long as it satisfies the triangle inequality theorem, which we'll talk about soon. The sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Side lengths can vary. And the last one, this is true, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. Wonderful. Okay, so this next one, it's sometimes helpful to use some colors as you're counting them. So here, how many equilateral triangles of all sizes are there in the three by three by three equilateral triangles shown below? Hint, there are more than 10. So if you count each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the big one is 10. And then from there, you can think of, well, here's another one. So you can make these three stacks. So that's 11, um, 12, and then 13. So there are 13 here. And if you look at 28, it says how many isosceles triangle all sides and shapes are in the regular pentagon below. By regular pentagon, a regular shape is any shape where all the sides and angles are the same. So all angles are congruent and all sides are congruent to themselves. So for example, if I wanted to count an isosceles triangle, I could count this as one of them. So go ahead and I'll let you know there's more than 24 right there in that shape. So take a moment, pause the video, and let's see if you can come up with the correct number. Are we ready? 35. Amazing, right? So take your time. That's just a little fun activity for you to... Have some fun with some shapes. So now we're going to do two really awesome activities. Have your protractor and your tape ready and your scissors. And this is all about thinking about the number. The degrees in a triangle always add up to be 180 degrees. So here 
we're going to be examining any angles within any triangle. So here's a triangle, and if you take the angles that you measure, they should be able to line up on a straight line because that's 180 degrees. But it has to be the angles of the triangle in the original triangle. Notice when I cut it, I did have these other two angles here, but those are not part of what we are exploring. So we have three triangles here, and let's label our first one one so we can keep it in order. And we're going to use our protractor here to measure our angle. So if we line up our zero, notice this goes up to 90 degrees. And if I wanted to be super accurate here, I could extend out our line so that you can really see that's at 90 degrees. So instead of labeling it at 90 degrees, I'm just going to put a little square because that's all you have to do. So I'm going to do the same thing with my other angles. So I'm going to line up my zero here. Measure from zero over. Notice this is exactly at 25 because it's between 20 and 30. So this is 25 degrees. And knowing that all the angles have to add up to be 180, we're hoping that this ends up being 65. So if I line up my protractor, lining up the zero as well as I can and taking a look, it's in between 60 and 70. What's between 60 and 70? You got it, 65 degrees. Perfect. Let's take a look at the next triangle. You might notice it looks like something and you'd be correct. If I line up my zeros, notice this one's 60. Lining up my zeros, this one's at 60 degrees. And our third angle, you guessed it, it's also at 60 degrees. So I'm going to call this triangle two and 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then using our protractor, maybe you have a protractor, maybe you don't, maybe you did this in class. If we measure this one, we end up, notice zero all the way up at 40 degrees. We're gonna label this as triangle three, so this is 40 degrees. If I come over here and line up my zeros, I notice this angle is also 40 degrees. So using my math deduction skills, has to have to be 180. I already have 80, so this, I hope, ends up being 100. And if I line up my zeros, I notice I'm right there at 100 degrees. So it's important when you measure an angle, we put this arc here so we know what angle we are talking about. So we're going to take a moment and cut these triangles out. So go ahead, pause the video to do that. And then we'll work on our next page. So hopefully you have your triangles cut out. Triangle one, triangle two, triangle three. And we're going to fill in our findings for what we found for those triangles. So again, this was triangle one, two, and three, and triangle one, if we're looking at triangle one, we found our angle measures to be 90 degrees, 65 degrees, and 25 degrees, which if we take the sum, which means we add them all up, we get 180 degrees. If we take a look at triangle two, triangle two, we found our angles to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees, which if we take the sum and add them up, you guessed it, you get 180 degrees. And our third triangle, we ended up with 100 degrees, 40 degrees, and 40 degrees, which if we add those up, we get 180 degrees. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is ask you to label one, two, three on your paper and draw a 180 degree angle or a straight line for each of those so we can line up our angles. So it says tape or glue the angles together below. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make 180 degrees with our triangles. 
I'm sorry, my scissors have walked away. I found them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our triangle one and we're gonna cut off each angle so you can still see the measurement and the arc. So this is my triangle one. It's gonna be just trash. And what you can do is line up the angles that you measured to make 180 degrees. So I could line those up to make 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter, you can put the 25 degree angle first. You can put the 65 degree angle first. There's a 25 degree angle and there's the 90 degree angle making a straight line. However you put these three angles together is gonna to make a straight line. What you cannot do is notice I didn't measure what this angle or that angle is. It just got created when I cut my triangle. So if you try to use that angle to make a straight angle, it's going to be kind of funky. So remember you're using the angles from your original triangle and lining them up to show that, hey, they do make a straight angle. So I'm gonna take my tape, I'm gonna take my triangles here and line them up. So that my angles share a common vertex. and they make a straight line. Ta-da! We're gonna do the same one with triangle two and triangle three. So again, we're just cutting so we can keep the original angle that we measured in our triangle. And then that middle part is just gonna be trash. And we're gonna use just the angle that you measured from your original triangle to make a straight angle. Ooh, so pretty, so satisfying. So try to line them up as well as you can on your line. And then we have our third. And one way you know you did this is if you can take your arcs from your angles and kind of make one big arc if they will line up in a way making sure you're using the angle that you measured from the beginning. And triangle three, one, two, three angles. So it does not matter if you put the 40 degree angle first or the 100 degree angle first, you will be able to make, I just need to cut this one a little bit better. You will be able to make a straight angle and again I don't want to put it like this because this is not the angle I measured I need to use the 40 degree angle that I measured so I'll see students going like this and it's like well the angle you measured is over here I need you to use the angle that you measured from your original triangle to make that 180 because what we are showing here is that the angles of every triangle in the whole wide multiverse and all the multiverses make 180 degrees. So what can you include from the activity below above? All triangles have angles. You can call them interior angles if you want because they're on the inside. That add to be 180 degrees. Super important for the rest of your mathematical career. Fun! So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this last page. Um, it asks you to label the triangles with any missing sides to the nearest tenth and angle measures. Maybe you don't have a protractor and that's okay. Hopefully you got this measuring done in class. But if not, we are going to measure them together really quick. 
Um, for this first one, 75 degrees, 66 degrees, this third angle is predetermined for you. It has to be 39 degrees. This is about 7.7 .7 centimeters is what they're saying. It's between seven and a half and eight. This other side is a little more than five and a half. I'm gonna say it's approximately 5.7 centimeters. Remember we wanna use that approximate symbol whenever we can. And this last side measuring, I'm gonna say it's exactly eight and a half, but we'll use an approximate symbol because you know our uh, measuring device doesn't have tenths on it. So we're approximating. For our next triangle, if this is 60 degrees and this is 60 degrees, and this also has to be about 60 degrees. So that means that this side is also congruent. Our next triangle, triangle 34, we have a 40 degree angle, about 3.6. So we do need to measure our other angles and sides. So this is really close to about seven centimeters. I'll say 7.0 centimeters since it's said to the nearest tenth. We want to put decimals to the nearest tenth. And our other side, ooh, it's about nine and a half centimeters. Notice because this is my largest side, it's going to be opposite my biggest angle. And we can tell that this does look like an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90. Line this up. I'm going to extend out this line just so I can be more accurate when I'm using my protractor. So lining this up at the zero, going all the way over here, and I'm at 120, which is way more accurate than if I was kind of eyeballing it. So this is 120 degrees, which we know that this has to be 20 degrees, but I can measure it just in case, and there it is, 20 degrees. Perfect, and our last triangle as we're measuring it, this is 90 degrees. We don't write in the 90, we just put in the square. And this is 45 degrees, which means if these are both 45 degrees, opposite sides also have to be the same. So this is about 6.0 centimeters. So now what I'm gonna ask you to do is classify the triangle based on the sides and angles and show the sum of the angles. So by showing the sum of the angles, for example, here, I'm going to have 66 plus 75 plus 39 is equal to 180 degrees, which makes me really happy because that means it's a triangle. It's not just a make-believe triangle. If I'm classifying this triangle based on the sides and the angles, looking at the sides, they're all different. So this would be scalene. Looking at the angles, they are all less than 90, so this is acute and it's a triangle. We can draw in a triangle, you can write the word triangle. So go ahead and finish the last three problems. Pause the video, and we'll go over them in a moment. Let's see how you did. Our next one is an equilateral acute triangle. The angles add it to be 180 degrees. Uh, number 34, we have a scalene obtuse triangle. They also add it to be 180 degrees. And our last one is an isosceles right, which also add it to be 180 degrees. Excellent. Great job, mini mathematicians. Thank you so much. Do your best. Be nice to everyone. And I'll catch you next time. Video bar out.